naming epoxides. Topic of this lesson, we're going to go through a couple of different ways that you're likely to have encountered naming epoxides. Some of you will be on the hook for one versus the other, and some of you guys might be required to know both. Now, I'm adding more lessons to this organic chemistry playlist several times a week right now, and if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so first of all, an epoxide three-membered ring with oxygen in it, and uh, we would learned how to make them way back in the alkene chapter, and you can take an alkene and use a peroxy acid like MCPBA to make them, and, and it turns out historically that's one way they were commonly named. They were named from the alkene that they were formed from, and so the alkene that might have been used here to form ethylene oxide is ethylene. You add MCPBA to ethylene or any peroxy acid and it turns it into what they called ethylene oxide. So one way to name it, so the IUPAC systematic way calls it an oxiran. And when you name it as an oxiran, this is going to be unique. So the oxygen gets to be atom number one. So normally we only number carbons in most organic molecules. The, if you name this as an oxirane, that is going to be the exception. So, and from there you just then name, you know, him as atom one, and then one of these is two, and one of these is three, based on where you've got substituents located. So if we look at an example here, so uh, oxygen again is going to be atom number one, if I'm naming it as an oxirane. And in this case, I made it symmetrical, and I did this for a couple of reasons. So one, it doesn't really matter where we, you know, call two and three. I can go two and three, or two and three, and it's the same thing either way. So that's one reason. But the other reason, so is I actually want to make a point of putting methyl groups, identical methyl groups on this carbon and on this carbon. That way we didn't end up with any chiral centers. Because I didn't want to have to name R and S and all that stuff to kind of cloud the waters. I really just wanted to go over what's new with naming epoxides here. So, but the parent chain here is going to be called oxirane. So, and then everything that's not part of this three-membered ring will be named as substituents coming off oxirane. And so in this case, I can see I've really got four methyl groups, two on carbon two and two on carbon three. And so we're gonna say two comma two comma three comma three tetramethyl. Oxirane. All right, so that's one way to name it. And again, that's the systematic IUPAC way. And uh, one you're probably most likely to encounter. Another way to go about this, though, looks at the oxygen of the epoxide actually as a substituent, not part of the main chain here. So in this case, you want to find your longest continuous carbon chain. And normally we wouldn't let that be like part of the ring and not part of the ring. But here we view this as a substituent. And we're going to kind of ignore the ring for a second. Uh, and just longest continuous carbon chain that these two carbons are a part of. And so in this case, it's going to be like one, two, three, four, and you could number it either way and you're going to get the same numbering system. Again, I made it symmetrical. And so in this case, your parent chain is going to be called butane, just four carbon chain. And again, this is, this is unusual because normally if you've got a ring, either the ring is your parent chain or something that's not the ring is your parent chain, but not parts of both. Well, this is unusual with epoxides here. And so in this case, you've got methyl groups on carbons two and three, but also attached to both carbons two and three is an epoxide, and we call it an epoxy substituent. And when you number the, you know, give it a, a chain locator, you actually give it the two numbers, the two and the three. And so in this case, epoxy comes before methyl, so we'll name it first. And so this is going to be two comma three epoxy, and then two, uh, two comma three dimethyl. Butane. Cool. And like I said, these are the two ways you are likely going to encounter naming if you see it in your course. And again, some of you will be on the hook for just one of the two, but some of you might be on the hook for both. Just pay attention to how your professor kind of presents it. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? It just simply enables other students to find this lesson more easily. If you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems, practice final exams, final exam reviews, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. Free trial is available.